Hello, I'm Dr. Vanita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is skincare in your 40s. So a lot of you have asked me to do this video many times and I've done one using specifically The Ordinary, but I thought it was important to just generally talk to you about what's actually happening to your skin, what the key ingredients and actives are, why you need them, how to layer them, the mistakes that get made, and then of course Dr. V approved products. As you know, every product I ever recommend to you is non-sponsored. So everything is evidence-based and specifically for skin of color. So for us, our skin is a little bit different in that our melanocytes are larger, the cells that produce the pigment melanin, and they are easily triggered. As I always say, one scratch, one bite, or one burn, and we hyperpigment, which we can't afford to do. So we have to be more gentle with our skin, but actually we need to use more effective ingredients on our skin um, because we suffer more with hyperpigmentation, for example. If you haven't grabbed your copy of Skin Revolution, please do now. It's a book that I wrote with HarperCollins and there's a whole chapter, chapter five, I'm gonna show you, which is basically your skin through the decades. So here's the contents page and we're basically gonna have a quick look at chapter five. So it's a sing skincare throughout your lifetime. Talk about formulas, key ingredients, this is a section of skincare in your 40s and what's happening and of course routine and top tips. Here's a quick flick through for you. Right, so let's dive right in. So what's actually happening to the skin? In your 40s, there's a reduction in estrogen. When estrogen goes down, your glucosaminoglycans go down. Those are the water magnets. So now imagine your skin is much drier because you don't have those water magnets in the skin. This means that there's more water evaporation happening from the skin. There is good news, however, because there are ingredients that you can use, i.e. humectants, which hold water in that top layer of skin for you. So really, your skincare needs to have more hyaluronic acid in it, more urea and glycerin. So you don't need all of them, uh, it will be too much. You just pick a couple of humectants and you want that in your skincare. In addition, you want to use more occlusive ingredients. So for example, in your teens and early 20s, um, you want to be using more gel-based moisturizers um, because you tend to have oily, acne-prone skin. In your 40s, skin tends to be drier, and so you want to use fattier moisturizers to lock water in, especially at nighttime. So look for ingredients such as petrolatum, mineral oil, or paraffin. In addition, you want to strengthen the skin barrier. I use an ingredient such as niacinamide because having a healthier skin barrier means that you have less transepidermal water loss, less evaporation of water from the skin. In your 40s, of course, you have increased loss of elasticity, which means there's less firmness of the skin. You get more fine lines, especially around the eye area. In addition, we are also producing less collagen. So as you know, you produce 1% less collagen every year from 21 years old onwards. So imagine by your 40s, you're producing 20 to 30% less collagen than at 20 years old. So basically you need to stimulate collagen. So there are certain ingredients you want to look for in your skincare. You want vitamin A, you want fat soluble vitamin C, tetrahexaldecalascorbate, you want peptides. Those are three main skincare ingredients. On top of this, you want supplements with collagen in it. The best is powdered collagen. This is eight grams of marine collagen and I drink it every day. And so marine collagen is halal, but also it has higher bioavailability. Um, and you really are looking for about eight grams. It's very important to look at the packaging when it comes to collagen, because a lot of, a lot of brands, it's like the wild, wild west. A lot of brands, you know, don't disclose how much collagen or what type of collagen or if it's sustainably farmed or not. Um, so this is just basic information I'm going to look for is how many grams of collagen and what type of collagen is it. Uh, so this is a Dr. V Collagen Boost, which hopefully should be available to you in a couple of weeks time. Um, but you know, I'm not saying you have to get this one, but get, I would um, recommend supplements. So at this point, if you haven't been wearing sunscreen for the last 20 years or 30 years or 40 years, um, this is when you're gonna start noticing it. Not wearing sunscreen makes everything worse. Fine lines are worse, pigmentation is worse, uh, you age prematurely, um, and so it's just, it's, it's, it's like an additional stress on your skin. It's like how stress 
worsens any skin condition, not wearing SPF 50 does exactly the same thing. So the key here is really you need to start wearing your SPF 50. I always prefer mineral over chemical because it's anti-inflammatory. So this is the one that we made for you in Zincable. I say SPF 50, you want PA4 pluses, so maximum UVA protection. Why? SPF 50 only talks about how much UVB protection you have. UVA protection uh, is, is um, what protects you from aging. So remember A for aging. So this has basically been designed for skin of color um, because uh, I wanted no white cast for us. And so there's no white cast with this and it took me years to make, so I hope you love it. <laughs> uh, the other things you need to be wearing are your wide brimmed um, hat and your anti-melasma sunglasses. So these are my ones. So I get melasma myself, and so I basically wear this when I'm driving. These are our new ones, they're basically midnight blue, and so they go with more blue type um, jeans and things. And this is, these are my brown pair, I love my brown pair. Um, I feel like it goes your skin colour so nicely, especially with um, on holiday. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show you. And at this point, you should really all have tyrosinase inhibitors and antioxidants in your skincare routine because tyrosinase inhibitors are going to help with any dull skin and hyperpigmentation. And honestly, by 40 years old, majority of us have some form of pigmentation, usually as tiny little dots, if not widespread, if you're in a, con in a country with a high UV index and you haven't been wearing sunscreen or genetically you're predisposed to it. Blah, blah, blah. None of my words are coming out, I'm sorry. If you're genetically predisposed to it. I actually think that's a tongue twister. That was just um, <laughs> a bit hard to say. Right, so let's go through your AM, PM skincare routine. In the morning, avoid any harsh soaps or hot water. These things are only going to lead to more transepidermal water loss. You need to be using a hydrating micellar gel wash. When you wash your face, your skin must feel supple. With your moisturizer, opt for a fatty nave safe moisturizer with humectants in it. You don't have a choice. You need to make sure you've either got glycerin in there, urea in there, or hyaluronic acid. And of course, without fail, you need your SPF 50 because there's n there is literally no actives that is going to help your that's going to help your skin if you're not wearing your SPF 50. So SPF 50 is really essential. Moving on to your nighttime routine. So this is a little bit more complicated, especially if you're trying to add in retinol into your nighttime routine. So first of all, you want to double cleanse. So that's your oil cleanser first, such as this one that I obviously use, the oil melting cleanser, uh, followed by your micellar gel wash. So this is going to remove your makeup, your sunscreen, and this is going to remove all your water-based dirt. You want to double cleanse because otherwise the actives you put on the skin are not going to penetrate the skin. Plus, if you don't clean the skin properly, you're going to clog up those pores and can lead to breakouts and just damage to your skin barrier. So that's the first thing you want to do. Then I'd like you to tone. Tone with a hydrating toner. The reason is this is your first step to hydration. Then if you want to exfoliate, I would do it maximum once a week. And if this is the first time that you're doing skincare, I wouldn't even exfoliate until your skin has become used to the rest of the routine. Exfoliation is probably the most irritating step. If you overdo it, you're going to damage your skin barrier too. So it's not more is better. So with exfoliation, avoid any harsh scrubs, opt for chemical exfoliation with hydrating ingredients in it. Because when you exfoliate, you are removing water too and your skin can feel tighter, which is, of, which is a mistake. You want your skin to feel more supple after you've exfoliated. Now on the days you exfoliate, that's all you do. Exfoliate, moisturize, and that's it. Or exfoliate, uh, use a very mild serum that has the same pH as your skin and moisturize and that's it. But if you're using retinol, then after you use your hydrating toner and wait to moisturize, then your retinol and then moisturize again. This is called the sandwich method because retinol is irritating. So you want to moisturize, retinol, moisturize so that you're basically buffering the retinol and you're not uh, you're not going to then lead to any irritation of the skin. Now with your moisturizer I want you to basically use um, fat soluble vitamin C, I want you to use peptides and tyrosinase inhibitors so these are extra ingredients that are going to boost your skin. Now the most important part of your skincare routine is this bit which is when you moisturize and then you I want you to use a facial oil on top. I basically want you to triple hydrate. You've already hydrated with your hydrating toner, then your moisturizer, your fatty moisturizer and then your facial oil because you're trapping water into the skin. 
um, and I'd recommend this from 40s onwards, not earlier. Um, and so again, your fatty moisturizer should be nafe safe. And then the facial oils are things like jojoba oil, marula oil, squalane. These are all oils that are not going to break you out and are actually quite hydrating to the skin. So there are some classic mistakes I see when it comes to 40s. So if you've never done uh, skincare before um, and you start, you start to get fine lines, your skin starts to feel dry, um, this is when people, um, you know, start watching YouTube videos and then may go all in with all the ingredients and really irritate the skin if it's not used to it. So um, it can also be very intimidating because, uh, I mean, even when I first started, um, you know, I could make head or tail of what an ingredient was, whether it was beneficial to me, what percentage should I be using, how do I combine it, how do I layer it? Um, it's confusing. So um, if you've never done it before, and you're starting in your 40s, it can just feel overwhelming. Then you get told, wear retinol, wear retinol, that's the only ingredient that you need. And then guess what? Retinol is the most irritating ingredient. And I really wouldn't start with retinol as your first anti-aging ingredient. You know, it's kind of an advanced stage after you've understood all the other things that you should be doing. And then when it comes to things like sunscreen, if you've never worn sunscreen before, sunscreen it doesn't feel like it's doing anything, you know? Whereas it's, when you're exfoliating, at least you can see your skin is immediately brighter. If you put moisturizer on, your skin immediately glows. But with sunscreen, you just feel like you're putting a layer on the skin and it's not really doing anything. How important can it be? When actually it's the most important thing you can do for your skin to prevent premature aging. The other thing is that with sunscreen, people tend to forget around the eye area. But guess what? This is the area that wrinkles first. The skin is thinnest here, and the skin is also the most dynamic. You smile the most, um, and so the most amount of movement happens around your eye area. Make sure when you apply your sunscreen, you focus here. Do not miss this area. People tend to go literally like this. I literally miss the entire eyeball area, so that's not gonna be you though. <laughs> okay, I'm now gonna go through the Dr. V approved products that are non-sponsored, so please get your pen and paper out. Right, starting off with your double cleanse. I like the DHC and Garnier Micellar Gel Wash, which is from Simple. Um, or you can use our oil melting cleanser plus the micellar gel wash from the Dr. Vita Rattan range. Uh, with moisturizer, I love Notorium Ceramide Moisturizer. I love CeraVe. Um, I love a uh, proteiny moisturizer from Drunk Elephant 2. It's full of peptides. There's nine different peptides in that. Um, or, of course, you can use our CeraPep Brightening Moisturizer with ceramides, peptides, niacinamide, and licorice root extract for brightening the skin. Moving on to SPF 50, um, I tend to prefer mineral over chemical, and so I love Color Science and Insinkable SPF 50. Obviously, this is our one, which is invisible, um, but I do like Color Science because it's tinted and it's mineral and it's nave safe. Moving on to toners, okay, so I like Hadalabo Anti Aging Toner because again, it's nave safe and hydrating. There's no um, denatured alcohol in it, uh, there's no menthol in it, which are thing, and witch hazel, these are classic things that get put into toners that I absolutely do not like the skin color. Uh, or you can use that one, which is the hydrating toner. So whichever one you like is fine. Moving on to exfoliators. So there are more options. So we have Mendeli Bright from Face Theory, 10% lactic acid from The Ordinary I Like, or obviously our exfoliator glow, which I've already discussed for you, which is 5% Mendelic, plus 5% lactic, plus 7% glycerin to hydrate the skin. Uh, moving on to your vitamin A. So I've got, I like 0.3% retinol from Paula's Choice. Um, and if you have sensitive skin, then you can use our Power Antioxidant Serum, which is retinol palmitate. So depending on your skin, which one's best for you. All right, moving on to vitamin C. So I like Regina C20, 20% uh, ethyl ascorbic acid plus amino acids. Uh, if you just want a combination, then you can use um, our antioxidant serum because it's got vitamin A, vitamin C in it, plus vitamin E and coenzyme Q10. When it comes to peptides, as I've already discussed, I love our, our protein -y from Drunk Elephant. And of course, our Sarah Pepper's got peptides in it. When it comes to tyrosinase inhibitors, start cheap, uh, go slow. So start with alpha arbutin 2% from The Ordinary, or I like tranexamic acid from The Inky List. So whichever one is good for you is fine. And then with barrier oil oils, um, I like marula oil from The Ordinary or from Face Theory. 
Also, if it comes to melasma specifically, if you're in your 40s and you're getting melasma, then I really like the discoloration serum from Good Molecules. Start with that first. If that's not working for you, you can upgrade to the facial pigmentation kit, which basically contains 10 tyrosinase inhibitors in it. Um, but this is expensive and you don't start with this. This is only if you've got widespread melasma and the cheap over-the-counter products aren't working and you need something a little bit stronger. Don't forget, I am in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. So please make sure you hit that uh, subscription button, but also the notification bell so you know I'm here. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I've got two accounts, Skincare by Dr. V and Dr. Nita Rattan. Also talk on TikTok, Dr. Nita Rattan. And we have a private Facebook group called Dr. V Sock family. And don't forget to get your copy of Skin Revolution. If you've purchased your copy, can you write the word yes below? Um, this is... Oh, I think this is going to be so great for our whole skin of colour family globally. Thank you. Bye.